Okay, this is See Into the Future. And if you were here, I would have you shuffle the cards as much as you would like. You could even table wash the cards. And once you're satisfied that the cards are sufficiently mixed, I would just take the cards from you and choose two prediction cards. Now, of course, I would do that in a way that you can't see the faces of the cards. So in, in the case of this video, I'll have to go off camera. Um, but when, I, when we go to um, do the tutorial, I'll show you exactly what's happening. <laughs> okay, there's a good prediction card, I think. Boy, the second one is really hard. I, I think that's a good one. I think that's a good one. Oh boy. Okay, so we'll put our prediction cards over here where you can keep an eye on them. I'm going to go ahead and just shuffle these cards because you might think that I've uh, rearranged them or that I'm aware of like where cards are or something like that. So I just want to make sure that you know that these cards are, are randomized here. Okay. That's probably enough. Three shuffles. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to make an absolute mess. Okay, so I'm going to flip the cards uh, face up, face down. <laughs> and somebody's going to have to clean up this mess at the end. I uh, hope it's not me. Okay, wow, what a mess. Okay, uh, in fact, I wanted to show you how messy this is. So it's face down over here and face up on the right. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. See, it's opposite here. <laughs> face up on the left, face down on the right. Um, oh, wow. There's even a place where it's facing the same way. Isn't that crazy? Well, let's just see what that has done for us here. I'm just going to just go ahead and try to spread these out the best I can. Oh, that's curious. I I thought we had, wait a second, I thought we had mixed them face up, face, I mean, you saw me, right? Uh, what is going on here? You saw me shuffle those face up and face down. H how did these two get? Now, uh, wait a second. We, we had two prediction cards, didn't we, at the beginning? Oh, how in heaven's name did that happen? What is it? I can't believe it. Okay, my first question is, I saw those cards being mixed face up, face down in a very messy manner. And then the only two that are facing the opposite way are the companion cards to my prediction cards. Oh man, I, I know I saw these clearly in my future. I had no idea that it would come out to mean what it's showing here on the table right now. How in the world did that come about? Okay, how does this work? We have the spectator mix the cards as much as they would like. They can even table wash the cards to thoroughly randomize them. And then when they're done, they just hand the deck to you as the performer. Now, what you're looking at, and you just tell them that you're going to choose two prediction cards. Well, just by the name here, you can guess what they are. The two prediction cards are the companion cards to the two bottom cards. Okay. So the two bottom cards, and I'll just show you clearly here. So it's a, a black two, and this is a good way to think of it. Just think black two, red three, as you're looking for those in just a moment. So black two, red three. So we're going to find the companion cards to those and leave those on the bottom. Okay, so black two, red three. Now you have this towards you, right? You don't show the spectator what you're doing. Okay, so there's the red three. And if for whatever reason you forget where your bottom cards are, you can just kind of spot them there, which is nice. Um, and so, let's see, we, we need a black two now. There you go. Okay, and then just, you know, kind of... Make sure you don't flash that, meaning show the spectator accidentally what the bottom card is. And then you can set your two uh, prediction cards off to the side where the spectator can keep an eye on them. Okay, now you can actually um, continue from this point and, and make a big deal about the fact that oh, I didn't, okay, I'm not gonna change the order of any of the cards. I just, 
I just, you saw me, I just chose two cards that ran, you know, kind of prediction cards that I felt were part of our future together, but I didn't mix the other cards at all, okay? That's not the way I did it. That's the way I've done it in other ones of this, under this category, under this heading here. Um, but you can. What I chose to do, and it's not too hard to do, is I just did a riffle shuffle in which you retain the bottom two cards. I just make sure that these two fall before the other side, right? So what that does is it just keeps them at the bottom. So it's called retaining the bottom stock. That's like the official name for it. So you just make sure that falls first and then the other side can fall and then they can fall in, you know, left, right in whatever order, okay? Um, so here you, you would not be giving it back to the spectator to shuffle uh, because most likely they'll destroy things, okay? So maybe just do two or three of those. You don't need to do very many. And uh, most spectators do not even know about this idea of retaining either the top cards or the bottom cards through a riffle shuffle, okay? So they will think, oh, okay, the cards have been mixed. Uh, again, <laughs> they mixed them, and now you've mixed them um, after choosing your prediction cards. So, the important thing is uh, the two cards of interest are at the bottom. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to use a technique, once again, that I haven't shown you before, but it's out there. You kind of hold the deck like this, and you need to give it just a little bit of a bend. And sometimes I'll even cover what I'm... I think that's how I do it. I actually kind of go like this to cover the fact that I'm doing that and if my finger needs to help, it's right there. So you just give it a little bit of a bow. It doesn't have to be super extreme, okay? And then what you do, it'll take a little bit of practice, but not too much. You push off a number of cards and then you flip them. Push off another number, flip those. Now, if you do this slowly enough, you'll quickly see what's going on. And that's one of the reasons to try to get to the point that you can do it kind of fast, you know, without dropping everything. Uh, because the spectator, uh, most spectators can probably figure out, well, now, wait a second, I think I know what's happening here. Um, you see, that you're just kind of dividing the deck sort of in half where they're facing opposite ways, which is true. Um, and then, but what you need to do now, when you get down to those bottom two, so deposit that third one there, you, f you flip it over like that, and then these need to go kind of face to face with that top one there, okay? So what that does is it puts those two out of sync. You can see right here, they're out of sync with the others, okay? Uh, at, least, at least the top portion, okay? We'll see why we retain that in just a moment. Okay, and then you kind of close it up and I would hold kind of, a, you know, kind of hold it tightly here because the spectators may notice that there's kind of a bow there, right? So what you do to kind of convince them that the cards are really scrambled is, um, so there's the, there's the center, right? So you break off about a fourth and you just show them, oh, okay. It's face down on the left, face up on the right, which is true. Put it back and then go about three quarters. Oh, wow, over here it's face up on the left and face down on the right. Okay, so it's kind of a convincing, it's a convincer that cards are all scrambled. And then it will naturally want to break where you have the, that bow. So what you do, you go, oh, wow, look at this they're actually both facing down. And now, if you notice what I did is I, so it was like this, right? They were like this, and you're showing it. You're showing it to them, and then it's been flipped, right? Can you see that? I flip it and put it on top. You know, don't, don't do it too slowly, and just do it as if nothing's being done that's sneaky, okay? But that action will do what maybe you think it'll do, it will actually correct the orientation of all of the cards except for those two that you intentionally kind of um, flip them 
so that they were out of sync with their neighbors there, right? And then you can make a big deal. For, I mean, it's almost like a one-two punch here because you go, what in the world? I mean, you saw it, right? You, you saw me going, mixing that up and down and up and down in a, just a haphazard way. Uh, how did most of the cards get corrected? They're, they're facing the same way. Oh, and what's up with these two? <laughs> Why are they not also facing down? And then you can kind of, you know, slowly have your eyes, you know, fall on your two prediction cards and go, oh, now, wait a second, did, I, I chose two prediction cards, right, at the beginning? I wonder what these are. What? Companion card to the, there's no way this is the three of diamonds, right? There's, oh man, what is going on? The universe is imploding. What, what is going on here? Can you explain to me what has just happened? You know, you play dumb and whatever kind of, um, you know, uh, acting or bad or good <laughs> acting you want to do, any little drama that you want to add to it. Um, but it, the first punch is just about all of these are now facing one way. How in the world did that happen? And then you have these two little you know, loan cards that are out of agreement with their surrounding cards. And then it's almost like an afterthought. Oh, wait a second, I, I chose two prediction cards. And then you bring them out and show them that they're the cards that are facing the opposite way here. And this routine will be completely inexplicable <laughs> to 99% of uh, spectators out there, unless they already know quite a bit of card magic, right? Okay. So um, anyway, this, this technique of um, you know, doing the up-facing and down-facing is one worth learning. It's technically a slight, of course. So here, you know, this would be a fun one you know, to have facing the opposite way. And you know, ideally, this is like the spectator's card. Uh, they freely chose it earlier or something, and then you, quote, controlled it to the bottom of the deck. It's at the bottom. Come over here, give it a little bit of a squeeze, like I said. And then you just go through, up, you know, you just say, oh, okay, we're going to make a big mess here. Um, kind of like you do in your bedroom. You just make a huge mess that's going to take forever to clean up. Now, as you get close to the end, you have to kind of keep an eye because you want this final card, a single this time instead of a double, to be out of sync with his neighbors, like that. And of course, because it's face down, they don't know what it is, right? And then you kind of hold it, you know, kind of tightly. I don't know if you can see my finger. My finger's kind of pushing on it a little. Sorry, finger's kind of pushing on it a little bit. Because depending on how vigorous you were in putting that bow, it looks like I put a pretty big little bend in it. Uh, you need to kind of keep, keep it squared up. Sorry, drop things. You need to kind of keep it squared up so they don't see that, okay? So they, you know, so any, anyway, so, you know, be, be aware of that. And then, do you remember what we did? We showed, like, the bottom fourth and go, oh, wow, that's face down, face up, and then go up to about three-fourths. Oh, that's the opposite, face up, face down, and then naturally it's going to want to do this. You go, oh, wow, they're both facing down, and then you just... You know, without even think, you know, you have to realize that okay, you're right here. If you immediately went like that, they would know. You just reverse that, you, so you don't do that. <laughs> you go, oh, that's interesting. Go, oh, that one's face down, and that one's face down. Okay, because you've separated these spatially, and there's a little bit of a time delay, and you're doing this pointing to the different parts they've lost track of what, where, what parts go where. And so you just set them down as if, it, as if it's supposed to go. This is putting it back the way it was. It's not. It was supposed to go like that. Put it back like that, and then the dirty deed is done. All of the cards will be facing the same way except for that card at, that started at the bottom. Okay. So anyway, that's a... That's a fun routine for see into the future that uses this clever technique for uh, reversing certain cards. 
and um, having all of the cars around it facing the opposite way. Thanks for watching.